everybody, I'm Argolfump, and I am playing Nancy Drew number seven, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. Oh, -hoo 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 -hoo. Welcome to my latest case, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. To start playing, choose either junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, choose tutorial. I probably need a lot of help, but, but, but don't worry, don't worry, I'm sure I can beat this game. I am going to play on junior detective mode, though. Dear Ned, remember Sally McDonald, the woman who took those photos that Dad has up in his office? Well, she just bought a house in Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. A gangster named Mickey Malone built it back in the 20s as his country getaway. We're talking major fixer-upper. Anyway, last night Sally called and she said she desperately needed my detective skills. She refused to say why over the phone. Naturally, I said I'd drive to Moon Lake immediately, but weird things started happening the moment I pulled up. First, this big tree fell down behind my car and has me totally blocked in. And then I discovered that Sally's gone. She left a note that suggested something terrible happens here at night. She's supposed to call me from her car. So here I sit, writing to you while I wait for the phone to ring. It's nighttime, and although part of me is dying to know what frightened Sally away, another part of me is starting to feel a little uneasy. I'll let you know what happens. Ever yours, Nancy. Alrighty, so we're here at this weird, creepy, abandoned... Well, it's not abandoned, but uh, the lady who's supposed to be here is not. Wait, I think that's her on the phone right now. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's Sally. We have to talk fast because I'm in my car and my cell phone's running low, so we might get cut off. But did you see my note? Yes, are you alright? No, I feel awful bailing on you like that. You must think I'm such a flake. I'm just worried about you. What's wrong? I couldn't stand the thought of spending another night there. I knew you were on your way, but it didn't help. I just got too scared. What's to be so scared of? It's a nice, wonderful place. What's to be scared of? It's so peaceful and quiet here. Just wait until it gets dark. Then you'll see. What am I saying? Nancy, you shouldn't be there by yourself either. Why don't you just go get in your car and go home? Or drive to Philadelphia. My aunt's got plenty of room. One of your trees seems to have other plans for me. What do you mean? A tree fell down behind my car just as I was driving up to the house. I'm blocked in. Oh, the dead maple beside the driveway. Oh, they told me it was in danger of falling over when I had the place inspected. I just never got around to doing anything about it. Listen, call M's Emporium. That's a store on the lake. Emily knows everybody. She'll know who to call if she decides to answer her phone. Well, what's her phone number? Don't worry about it. I'm not in any hurry to leave. You will be. Okay, look. I just bought a little outboard motorboat. I haven't used it yet, but the guy who put it in for me said it should run just fine. It's tied up at the dock out front. Just get in it and go. Go anywhere. Just get away from the house. That was really threatening when Emmy, Emily is like, uh, no, Sally, Sally. She's like, you will be. Yeah, yeah, you're not afraid. You will be. Why? What on earth do you think is going to happen? The dog. Who's the dog? Out of nowhere. They're just... Outside, howling and snarling, teeth and claws, horrible. Dogs? Hello? Did you say dogs? Hello? Alrighty, so I did a poll asking people if I should consult my notes. Everybody says, um, I should not. I should try doing this game on my own, no looking at any of the puzzle solutions. Okay! We're playing on hard mode, I suppose. Just beating this game based on my memory. Ah. Ah. What is that? It's one of those ghost dogs of Moon Lake. Alrighty, so we've got a couple things we can do here. Like, I've got a water bottle. What, 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 water bottle? And note about the dead tree. Well, it's a little too late for that, huh? And we're gonna grab a flashlight. And this map would be great if we could keep the map. And we do keep the map! Hooray! The map is here in my inventory. Alrighty. And then this letter is... Nancy, I'm really sorry, but I just can't face another night here. Please don't hate me. Oh, 
why did she run away? Why didn't she wait for Nancy? I... Is this a refrigerator? I am wondering what Nancy eats and drinks in this game. The moon's so bright, I won't need my flashlight. Woohoo! Something's out there. Ooh. Now look what you've done. That was a Strix Varia. At least I think it was. Never know for sure now, will I? A Strix what? Strix Varia. A barred owl. Real hard to spot. And it doesn't help that you're out here making more noise than a jumbo jet. My name's Nancy Drew. Have you been out here long? A couple hours. Name's Red Knot, by the way. And now that we've exchanged pleasantries, why don't you just skedaddle on out of here and leave me to my birds? Um, okay? I'm not going anywhere until I know what's been making those weird noises. That was me, Miss Nancy Drew, calling in birds. And doing a pretty good job of it, too, till you showed up. Where'd you come from, anyway? I'm staying here in the old Malone place. Now, why would you want to do a thing like that? The Malone house is no place for one young woman, let alone two. What do you know about the woman living here? I talked to her a couple of times. But you know, the last time I saw her, she wasn't doing so good. She acted real anxious, scared. What do you think was scaring her? The dogs. The dogs of Mickey Malone. Legend goes that when Malone was finally arrested and hauled away, his four dogs went running off into the woods and were never seen again. People would just hear them, howling like their hearts were broken every night until one by one, they all died and went silent. But every time someone tries living in the Malone house, back they come. Are you saying Sally's house is haunted by ghost dogs? Every night, ever since she moved in, you could hear them howling. And some nights the dogs would appear outside the house, running around, snarling and barking and throwing themselves at the doors and windows. And then, they'd be gone. They're buried in the cemetery just beyond the house, you know. Them and Malone both. Well, that's... That's scary as well. So the dogs are actually going to attack the house. The dogs would attack her house? It's like they don't want anybody but Malone living there. I guess they don't know he's dead. And so are they. Did they ever attack Sally? She never gave them the chance. After the first attack, she stopped going out at night. Just locked the doors when it got dark and sat tight until morning. Why haven't the police investigated? This isn't New York City, Miss Nancy Drew. All they got around here is one officious little park ranger. And all Jeff Akers does is sit around all day trying to figure out how he can get himself transferred out of here to a bigger park. So where do you live, buddy? Do you live close by? I just come to Moon Lake in the spring to look for birds. Got an observation platform just up the path, kind of my base camp, and I've got a little outboard down there on the lake. Left my car at the big dock up lake. Don't really need it. Are those the ghost dogs? Yes, ma'am. Which is why I think it would be a good idea if I went my merry way and you got yourself back inside that house. One more thing. The water in Sally's well needs to be tested. How do I do that? Get a sampling kit from Jeff Akers. Ranger station's on the east side of the lake. Good luck, Miss Nancy Drew. Alrighty. So yeah, Red Knot is just kind of a strange fellow who lives on the property. It's not safe to take the boat out at night. It's kind of weird that he just sort of lives on the property. He lives uh, over here, somewhere in this direction. Yeah, right over here, this observation platform. I hope this Sally... This Red's observation platform. I hope Sally knows about this guy and she's just not confused that there's a creepy guy just living on her property without her permission, because that would be weird. And, as soon as we go inside the house, we are going to get attacked by the ghost dogs! Woo! It is sort of like Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Baskervilles. But this one has four ghost dogs, so that means it's four times as scary. And where, where, where did Red not go, by the way? I hope he didn't, I hope he didn't get attacked by these dogs. This is not good. Ah! 
That is very scary and frightening. Those dogs attack. And uh, that's it. The dogs attack. That's, that's, that's what happens. I can't believe Nancy can go outside after that dog attack. I would be terrified and I'd be hiding. Oh. In touch with the ground. Ah, la, 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 how's it go? I'm on the hunt. I'm after you. Smell like I sound, a lost in the crowd, and I'm hungry like a wolf. The boat's full of water. Wait, really? Wow, that's a terrible boat. That's, that's not a good boat. Hey, I'm trying to check out this part of the boat. Oh, come on, Nancy! Okay, it looks like Nancy refuses to do anything besides fix the boat with water. So I need to find some sort of bucket. I think that's here in the shed. A face only a gnome could love. Haha, <laughs> it's a gnome. Alright, so that's for a gnome puzzle. Here's a key. Great. Can I grab this bucket? No, I want to grab the bucket. Wrong bucket, I suppose. We use the key here. Oh, and it breaks. The key broke off. It's locked. I think I need There's tweezers. got to be another way to get this open. Tweezers or something. Uh, the bucket is going to be by the water pump here, I think. Looks like paw prints. Oh, and there were paw prints there. Ah, oh, scary! Oh, hey! Screwdriver! I think that's what we use on the shed, actually. We're gonna use the screwdriver here on the shed. That will get us to open up this thing in the bobber. Nice, pleasant music. Yay! We get whatever that is. Gas mask. It will protect me from the coronavirus. That's good. And we get a hammer and nails. The boat is totally broken. That's unfortunate. The spark plug is missing. What is the point of a lock if the screwdriver can just completely destroy it? Yeah, yeah. I gotta have some torque. I gotta have some torque. Let's work this out, baby. The spark plug is missing. Oh, also we have a missing spark plug. Okay, so we need to get the missing spark plug. And the only way we get that missing spark plug is from that creepy guy, Red Knot. Because he's literally the only person we can talk to. Nobody else lives here. So we're going to switch back to nighttime. Because he only shows up at night. I don't know where the dude hangs out during the day. He only shows up at night. It's weird. Like the ghost dogs. Well, the ghost dogs won't show up again. But, 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 but. Red Knot will. He's sitting right here. Well, it's Miss Nancy Drew. Please, just call me Nancy. I will if you keep your voice down. I just heard a Cerulean Warbler. Really? Are they rare? Something tells me they're gonna be with you around. You didn't come up here to chit-chat, did you? Don't you want to chit-chat with me? I'm a friendly person. Are you out here all by yourself? I came to see birds, not people. The more people there are in a forest, the fewer birds there are. It's a fact of life. Reason I like to come here is because nobody else does. It's perfect. Not a decent grocery store, restaurant, or motel for miles. Well, thank you for telling me all the facts of life, Red Knot. Do you have a spark plug? You don't happen to have any spare spark plugs lying around, do you? What's a pretty young lady like you know about spark plugs? Hey, dude, I know everything. I know, I even know what the word torque means. Okay, don't mess with me. I'm Nancy Drew. 
I'm a very curious person, Mr. Knott. I like to know things. I might be able to help you out. After all, I was a Boy Scout. Be prepared. <laughs> you mean you have a spark plug I could buy? Well, just so happens I've got two spark plugs right here in my pocket. Question is, if I give you one, what do I get for it? I don't need cash, but maybe you could take a few pictures for me. You know how to use a digital camera? Maybe you could just give me the spark plug because you're a nice person who's not a jerk. Fine, I'll do your chores. My friend Bess just got one for her birthday. I helped her figure out how to use it. There's a couple of birds I'm supposed to take pictures of for Pepsob. That's people for the preservation and study of birds. You can recognize them by their songs, which are on this tape, which you can play on my cassette player, which you're going to have to get from M's Emporium as soon as you get your boat fixed. <laughs> Think you can handle that? Okay, you just said like five things in a row. I can't. I can't even. Sounds good. Here's everything you'll need. M's Emporium is up lake on the west side. Not that I'm trying to get you out of my hair or anything, but try not to come pestering me till you're done, okay? One more thing. You smoke? Uh, only when I'm on fire. Oh, you're a spunky one, aren't you? Well, these woods may not look it, but they're tinder dry. One lit match, and the best bird habitat on the East Coast will go up in smoke. So watch what you do, because if anything like that happens, I won't be looking for birds anymore. I'll be looking for you. Watch yourself out there. Well, that was threatening. Thanks, Red. Thanks. Yeah, he, he gave us a long chore. It's going to take forever to actually do this chore. But that's okay. We've got all the time we need. Let's skip to morning time. Yeah. Yes, this game was made back when phones and cameras were totally different objects. Like, here's the camera, and where's our little phone thingy? Here's the phone thingy. It can't make phone calls, actually, because, you know, it's just... It's, it's more for taking notes than phone calls. I don't know. I, I'm just making myself sound super old at this point. Alrighty. Spark plug goes in there. Now we want to have plus, plus, zero, and minus. So I think by zero, they just mean middle. Let's say plus is down. And minus is up. So down. Up. Let's see if that works. Oh. Come on, where's my torque? Torque it! Something must be very wrong with this engine. Ah, it's not torquing. Let's try this then. Let's try the alternate configuration where plus is down and minus is up? Or was that the first configuration? Anyway, we'll try again. We torqued! No, 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 too much torque. Oh. Yeah. Way too much torque. Alrighty. I I just don't know. What what is plus? If plus I I tried both my ideas. Wait, was this one up? That one needed to be middle. Is that what I did wrong? That was it. Okay, I had it. I just missed the upper right one. Sorry, everybody. We now have the correct amount of torque. I am definitely, definitely able to move around. So what on earth is torque? There is a torque wrench. Ooh, maybe Nancy could get one of those. That sounds cool. Torque is a measure of the force that can cause an object to rotate about an axis. I have no idea what that means. I, what? Uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> Torque is alternately defined as the rate of change of angular momentum in an object. It's calculated as the radius times the force with the sine of theta, theta being the angle between F and the lever R. 
none of these definitions make any sense to me whatsoever. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's just talk to M. Hi, M. Hey there. Welcome to M's Emporium. I'm Emily Griffin. Hi, Emily. Do you have a chainsaw? I need to find somebody with a chainsaw, and Sally McDonald suggested I talk to you. Sally McDonald, huh? You a friend of hers? Yep. Yes, my name's Nancy Drew. I'm in town visiting her. Now what's she doing inviting guests out to that old dump? Well, I mean, she's nice and has friends. I don't understand why everybody thinks it's weird to talk to other people in this game. <laughs> she's got a little problem she's hoping I can solve, but... Right now, I need a chainsaw. A chainsaw? Yeah, don't people normally just show up and say, Hey, where's your chainsaws, lady? What I really need is for someone to come out and remove the tree that fell in Sally's driveway. I'll get Tucker Davis to take care of it. Gotta warn you, though. Tucker tends to do things in his own sweet time. So how come Sally ain't with you? Yeah, Tucker... He's kind of all tuckered out at the moment. So he, he won't be able to come get that chainsaw anytime soon. The ghost dog scared her off. I told her. I said, Sally, that old house is going to be nothing but trouble. And sure enough, Malone's hounds have come back. Just when we all thought they were finally resting in peace. We thought the monster was gone forever. We thought wrong. Have you ever seen the dogs? Nope. Don't want to, neither. Just hearing them howl's bad enough. Scares the bejeebies out of me. Oh no, not the bejeebies. I got the bejeebies scared out of me twice last night. Just before I saw the dogs, I caught a man named Red Knot prowling around outside the house. The bird watcher. Comes in every so often to stock up on that weirdo food he eats. You know how them tree hugger types are. Yep. He hugs trees, eats bird seed. That's exactly what I imagine Red Knot does every day. He just eats bird seed because that will help him find birds better. It seemed to me that he was more into watching birds than hugging trees. Yeah, well, whatever. One thing's for sure. He's going to wind up with a dose of buckshot in his hind end if he keeps tramping through people's yards making noises like he just popped out of a UFO. That is true. He does make weird, weird noises. Mr. Knott did me a favor, and in return he asked me to pick up a cassette player from you. Oh yeah, I got it right here. Thought maybe the old coot had forgotten he left it here. So can I grab it? How do I grab it? What else can there I we do go. you for? Alright, okay. We, we now have his uh, bird player, which I'm never going to listen to, but it's good we have it. Maybe? Where do you find your... <laughs> Bless you. It's all the dust. Sometimes I think it grows on this stuff. Some of those old bottles are beautiful. Where'd you get them? Found them. See, back in the days of Prohibition, that old Malone place used to be party central. Only way to get to and from back then was by boat. And when those boats dumped, on account of bad weather or bad driving or the feds suddenly showing up, while well, everything from diamond necklaces to full bottles of illegal booze sank to the bottom of the lake. So, it's finders keepers, huh? That's right. See, recovering objects from the lake bed is illegal. According to Squeaky Wheel Acres, dragging the lake for artifacts was upsetting its delicate eco-balance. So thanks mostly to his constant squawking, the state banned it. Are you saying you acquired this stuff illegally? Well, of course not. It all washed up on shore. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. Sounds like you aren't real fond of Ranger Acres. Jeff Acres could take all his precious rules and regulations and take a flying leap. Now, I got nothing against getting more customers in here, mind you. But I kind of like Moon Lake the way it is. Small, quiet, out of the way. But Jeff Acres, why, there's nothing he'd like better than to see all the lake and all the property around it turn into one big, noisy, jam-packed state park. Why would he want that? He's the type of guy who likes to boss people around. Makes him feel important. So if the park got way bigger and was crawling with tourists, why instead of giving out maybe one ticket for littering every two days, he'd be giving out one dozen tickets every two hours. He'd be in heaven. Well, hey, I'm sure you got better things to do than getting your ear chewed off by yours truly. 
Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. It would be cool if we could rent out some of those movies. Like, I want to watch one of those movies or buy some Coco Kringles. I don't think Nancy can actually buy anything in this store. We could just look at this store. That's it. I have to wonder how many people actually go to the store, considering how far this place is from everywhere. I mean, like, there are only three places. At most, M has three customers, right? Maybe five? So... Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I think what we have to do now is we need to take pictures of the birds. And when we do take pictures of the birds, some of the birds are going to run away. And then we have to talk to Red Knot about it. So we can only do some of the bird puzzle right now. Oh, hey, and there was a thing I just missed. Didn't I? Yay, we've got a board. We've got a plank. Better I'm be just careful. gonna carry it around with me. Oh, no. It's the no dreaded, birds here. dreaded maze. Ooh. There we go. We got a bird. Great, we have one of six birds. Is that Where a bird? Are all the birds. I can't find my birds anywhere. They are like all birded out. Is that a bird there? Tweet tweet! Tweet tweet tweet! All the little birdies on Birdie Street dancing around with the tweet tweet tweet. Rock and Robin. Woo! Ooh, rock and Robin, tweedly, tweedly, all the little robins and they're dancing and singing this song. Do, 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 do. Can't find my way out of this area. I do have a map, right? Yeah, there's the log. So if I'm by the shoe, that means I'm here. Somebody puts out a, a, a good point that M is probably saying mean things about Nancy to all the other characters when Nancy's not there. M just loves talking about people behind their backs. So now I'm here. I'm go forward. And now I'm at the dead tree. Yes, so I can go forward past the dead tree. Got a bird. Mm, missed it. Oh no! That bird has just been, uh, gone forever. I think Nancy's the one who wrote the notes, like, red bird and shoe, uh, and tree, right? It's not the case that that shoe has been there for a hundred years. Alright, so I'm gonna go left at the fallen tree, and then follow the pathway to the exit. Is that what I do? Yes, okay, that's how we get to the exit. I think the other thing is here, this one. And then the rest of that junk is just too old. Too old indeed. There's that giant tree which blocked off Nancy's access. Okay, so now we're gonna go inside. Ah. We're gonna go inside and we're gonna switch to Red Knot to ask him, why can't I take pictures of all these various birds, sir? They all seem to run away. Run, 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 run. You find all the birds? I found some birds, but no matter how quiet I am, I've been scaring other birds away before I can take their picture. What am I doing wrong? You're wearing those clothes. That's what you're doing wrong. You need to blend in, like me. Go back over to M's tacky tourist trap and get yourself some camouflage gear. Only sensible thing that money grubber carries. 
I'm sorry, but finding those birds is harder than I thought it would be. Can you give me any tips? You gotta look for them. This isn't gonna be any Sunday picnic, you know? And try early in the morning. That's when most of them are singing. See you in a while. Just remember, eyes open, mouth shut. So, like, why can't Nancy... I mean, yeah, the birds are only there during the morning, so why is this guy only here during the evening? That is the question I have. So I believe the boards are going to go down here on the floor. It's still not fixed. I guess I need a third board. I'll find it at some point. Let's call Sally. Hello? Hey, Sally, it's Nancy. Nancy, did you see them? Did you see the dogs? Yes, yeah. I did, and I can understand why you left. They were pretty frightening. But if it's okay with you, I'd really like to stay and get to the bottom of whatever's going on. That's why you asked me here in the first place, right? Yes, but Nancy, are you sure? Positive. Consider Detective Drew officially on the case. I wish I were even half the trooper you are, Nancy. Oh, I have such high hopes for that house. All the beauty there, the wildlife, all the pictures I was going to take. It would break my heart to have to give it up. I need you to tell me everything you can about those dogs. They're black and they have yellow glowing eyes and they don't like me one bit. When's the first time you saw them? Well, let's see. I heard them the very first night I was here. I heard them almost every night, howling in the distance. But I didn't actually see them until I'd been here about a week. After that, they started appearing pretty much every other night. Did they always come around the same time, or did it vary? Actually, they always came around the same time. What are you getting at? These attacks seem to involve a lot of choreography, which reinforces my theory that you're not being randomly attacked by a pack of wild dogs, but by dogs who've been trained by someone determined to scare you out of your house at Moon Lake. Who would want to do that? My closest neighbor lives two miles away. My property is surrounded by the state park, but it's off-season, so hardly anybody is in the park. In fact, I bet I talked to a total of three people the whole four weeks I was at Moon Lake. Every time Nancy says, oh, these, uh, these attacks involve a lot of choreography, it just makes me think, like, the dogs are wearing ballerina tutus and dancing around on stage. Which three people? Let's see, the park ranger, I forget his name, kind of a pain in the neck. Emily Griffin, she's the one who owns that store I told you about. And I ran into this bird watcher a couple of times. Had a funny name. Red Knot. I run into him, too. Other than people I may have nodded hello to while getting gas or something, I swear those are the only people I've talked to at Moon Lake. What about River Heights? Can you think of anyone there who'd want you to sell your house at Moon Lake and move back to River Heights? <laughs> you mean like an angry ex-boyfriend or something? Nope, I sure can't. Since I'm going to be staying here a while, is there anything I should know about the place? Well, let's see. I've got the water turned off because it's well water and it needs to be tested before I can use it for anything. In fact, if you could get that testing done for me, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and watch where you walk in the living room. Some of the floorboards are so rotten you could fall right through. And I keep hearing these faint squeaks and rustling type noises coming from below the floor. I hope you're not scared of mice. How do I go about getting your water tested? Try the ranger station on the east side of the lake. I've been told you can get some kind of kit there. I'm curious. Why did you characterize the park ranger as a pain in the neck? I left part of a ham sandwich on a picnic table once. Big mistake. From the way he carried on, you'd think I just made the FBI's ten most wanted list. I don't think he likes me. Emily says it's because I wrecked his dream of becoming super ranger or something when I bought the Malone house instead of the parks department. Me, I think he just basically has a problem relating to people unless they're asking questions or breaking the law. Where'd all that stuff in your tool shed come from? It's just junk left behind by previous owners. Came with the house. I've been meaning to take inventory and start pitching stuff, but I didn't. If they ever make procrastination a crime, I'm done for. Talk to you later. Bye. Yep, Sally definitely seems like she was totally unprepared to have any visitors at all. She really should not have invited Nancy over. It's just...
just not a good idea. Like, hi, Nancy, the water's off. I can't help you. There's a creepy weirdo hanging around, and there's not enough torque. Like, why, why would Nancy want to come over? Let's meet our good friend, Ranger Acres. Hey, Acres. Hello, can I help you? I'm Nancy Drew. I'm visiting the woman who bought the old Malone place, Sally McDonald. Do you know her? Sally McDonald? Yes, I've had occasion to write her up once or twice. Yeah, I heard you left us. I heard she left a ham sandwich on a table and you were mad. You find her for something? She littered. Food items, as I recall. An apple core, crust of bread, something like that. She tried to argue that the animals would eat them, but litter is litter. And besides, feeding the wildlife is also illegal. I have to wonder what table she left them on. Was it like a table on her property? Or I... I don't know. Sounds like you take your job very seriously. Being a park ranger can be a thankless job, Ms. Drew. But I know that every time I enforce a rule... I'm helping to preserve some plant or animal, however minute, for future generations of park goers. And that's... that makes him feel really good about himself when he's slapping somebody with a hundred dollar fine for not finishing their ham sandwich. Do you have something I could use to test the well water at Sally's? Sure do. Simple to use, too. Just pump some water into this vial, return the sample to me, I'll send it off, and in a day or two, you'll find out whether or not your water's fit to drink. Does everyone out here have a well? <laughs> everyone who doesn't want to die of thirst does. Hooking up to a municipal water supply is out of the question. Too expensive. Yeah, so how has Nancy survived? This is like day number three, and she's not had any water? That sounds odd. I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh, yes. The Birdman. I'd stay away from him if I were you. What's wrong with the Birdman? Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best birdwatching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, he'd do it in an instant. There are, like, three people! Why is he so mad? What do you know about the pack of dogs that's been terrorizing Sally? They've scared her so bad that she's gone to her aunt's in Philadelphia. Don't tell me she believes all that ghost dog stuff. Hey, I saw those ghost dogs. They attacked. So you know the legend? I know almost everything about this area. Not only have I lived here all my life, but you're standing in the unofficial Moon Lake Museum of Factual and Natural History. Oh my. I'm its equally unofficial curator. Would it be okay if I looked around? Please do. And if you have any questions, any more questions, just ask. I think you just called me a Snoopy Susie. Uh. Would you mind mailing this letter for me? Not at all. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Oh, and one last thing. The deer mouse population has boomed this year, so please take precautions if you're cleaning out any area where they may have nested. They can carry some nasty diseases. Thanks for the tip, Ranger Acres. Yeah, what, what was the letter? I don't quite remember what letter Nancy was holding. Anyway, he gave me the, the testing kit, so we're gonna go check out the testing kit at some point, I think. We can learn about the history. Ooh, priming a pump. That's helpful. This is how pumps work! Woo! Jeff Akers has a page about himself on his own website. Wow. Okay. Ask your friendly park ranger for more information. Well, this is an important picture. We're basically going to get into the story about Nicky Malone and his stuff later.
For now, we just need to get our, our well water tested. Only thing of water on it. Nancy might drown. No, no, wait, she's not gonna drown. She's gonna do the opposite of drowning. I don't need water right now. No, Nancy, you. Nancy, try again. I will get a sample. Got a sample. Yeah, somebody has a good suggestion. Like, we could maybe start a controlled fire to get rid of that tree. Maybe? I... Hmm. Yeah, where is Nancy's car, by the way? Her car is trapped by the tree. I don't see her car anywhere. Is it here on this side to the left? Maybe? I... Hmm. Totally forgetting where Nancy's car is. Anyway, let's get our sample dropped off uh, and get some tacky tourist stuff from Abs. Tacky tourist in Gloria. Howdy, Nancy. Any word from Tucker, what's his name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. Well, maybe we could call Sally and force her to come out here during the daytime. Like, why doesn't Sally come out during the daytime? That would be great. And yeah, I believe that top rental movie at the very top, that looks like Vanishing Destiny starring Brady Armstrong. I wanted to watch Brady Armstrong's movie. Can I rent it, please? I need to buy something. You want it? I got it. As long as you pay cash, that is. I, uh, didn't bring any money with me. Sorry. Right now, cash is kind of a problem for me. Do you think we could do some kind of trade-out? You scratch my back, I scratch yours, huh? Seeing as how you're a friend of Sally's, and seeing as how I got some things around here that could use doing, I guess we could work something out. What is it you need? To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. But I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. A dozen little critters? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Do I need some kind of permit? Things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jeff Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Akers used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover that one was. Joe Akers is Jeff's father? That's right. Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. Alrighty. So now we get to bun now now we get to get a bunch of animals. A dozen little critters. No, seriously, does Nancy not have anything worth trading? I guess she doesn't. Let's go back to the moon. Yeah, I forgot to go to Ranger Acres. Drop off that sample. You're back. I have that water sample. What do I do with it? Just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Yeah, let's see. I mean, she has a life vest. She needs it. Um... Yeah, that's not her digital camera. Otherwise, I'd sell that digital camera. All 
right here. So, let's see if we can find the dozen little critters. Some of them are here. Ah, there we go. Three worms. It looked like there were three worms, but I don't see any worms anymore. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so this is a puzzle. It's not a very friendly puzzle, because we have to go throughout, like, the entire maze to see if we can find these critters. And then we switch to nighttime, and we get to do it all again. okay though I guess we were looking for some of the birds come on Nancy you gotta get those critters you gotta move more quickly critters are all under rocks and trees and things so where am I I'm here on the right hand side um, all right left of the log nope no critters here yeah, here we go. I heard some. Yeah, there we go. Got a critter. Don't be a quitter. Gotta grab the critters. Woo! None here. there. I think like that sound effect indicates there are more critters around. Now I'm lost. Beautiful. Okay. Definitely clean that log out. That, I already checked that. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Okay. So we're, we're gonna have to try this. La 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 la. Ooh, found some. No, I did not. That is a scary, scary thing. I I would be uh, afraid of it. All those critters are everywhere. Don't be a quitter. Look for all the critters. Past the fallen tree is the red bird that hates me. Yeah. Gotta remember that red bird doesn't like me. It'd be cool if we had snails. I don't think we have any snails, though. I think I took a wrong turn. At the tree, we turn, and that gives us this log. Ah! Ooh, here's a bird. Nice blue bird. There's a yellow thing. Yellow ribbon. What the? Ow! Bird operating a chainsaw? Because I need a chainsaw. I just don't think I needed a bird to chainsaw it for me.
12 birds. I don't know, how much do you think a piece of camouflage gear costs? Probably a lot of money, right? So let me go past this uh, yellow ribbon. Guess I headed the wrong way. Okay, I want to go past the yellow ribbon. Take a left here. That's the tree stump. Right past the tree stump gives us nowhere. Left past the tree stump gets us here. No critters here during the daytime, it looks like. We have that board. This is where the dogs are buried. We're saying camouflage gear costs like fifty dollars. So uh, yeah, twelve critters, fifty dollars. Sure, sure. There's just some very fancy, fancy critters. Darn! It flew away. Alrighty, so yellow bird and red bird. Those were the two birds I could not get. Those two. Come back! I'll have to try to remember. Was there a third bird somewhere? No, 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 no. The, the final bird is something else. Because of course we have a separate puzzle just for the final bird. Why wouldn't we? Now I'm lost. Aha! There's the tree stump, and I want to... Go turn around, go left from the tree stump, take the first right, follow this to the yellow ribbon, turn at the yellow ribbon. That takes me to fallen tree, I'm looking at this fallen tree, no, I go right at the log, left at the fallen tree, and then I can just escape at the first escape. Okay, how many critters did we find? We we have a lot of a lot of critters here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven critters? Is that is that enough? Sorry if I'm ignoring the chat here. It's it's hard to look for critters. Yeah. Huh. So I think we just switch to nighttime here. Is that what we do? That's not how we switch to nighttime though. Sorry. <laughs> Got confused for a second there, yeah. Well we can get the floorboards in place now that I have all all of them. One, two, three. Use my hammer and nails. Hooray! Rotten floorboards, watch your step. There's a hidden door there, but Nancy doesn't realize that yet, so she can't go through the hidden door. Nancy is an expert carpenter. She can carpenter anything. Just call her Nancy the Carpenter Lady. Woo! Eh. No, no bugs there. So let's see if we can find some bug bugs here. Now that's nighttime. Don't see any bugs there. Here? It's like a glow worm. That's creepy. So I'm going to try to go back to the graveyard, because the graveyard has at least one little bug. I've already lost count of how many bugs I need. <laughs> There's a monkey in the forest right now. I 
there was a... Yeah, here we go. We found it. That's got two. Yeah, we got double bugs. So now I need to count ghost monkeys of Moon Lake. Terrifying. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We did it, everybody. We have a dozen little critters. I guess finding them at nighttime is not so tough. I, I thought it was terrifyingly scary, but it, it was actually rather easy. Just go straight to the graveyard, pick up any uh, bugs you've got along the way, and you're golden. I need to figure out how to get out of here. Okay, left at the fallen tree. And then first exit. Did it! Woohoo! And now M will give us the camouflage gear so we can get those next two birds. Dozen little critters, woohoo! Got a dozen little critters, how about you? Nancy, how's the bait finding coming along? Twelve big, fat, juicy ones, just like you wanted. Well, now, you done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding <laughs> up? Yeah. These so-called ghost dogs left very real paw prints. I saw some near the cemetery that's by the Malone house. Have you ever been there? <laughs> Can't say as I have. Poking around cemeteries ain't exactly a hobby with me. Guess I'll see you later. Yodel hee hoo I don't know why she yodels. <laughs> That's weird. Let's find those last two critters, shall we? Why did I go inside? Um, I don't know. Let's just call Nancy's friends. Let's call Bess and George. Nancy, how's it going? Hey, Bess. How'd you know it was me? Telepathy, of course. Just another of my many talents. You are so full of it. She got caller ID, Nancy. So now, instead of hanging up on the geeks that always call her, she just doesn't answer the phone. Very funny. So what's up? Yeah. Caller ID. Woo, sounds fancy. I guess this game was made back in the day before everyone had caller ID on their phones. Believe it or not, on some nights, this house gets attacked by a pack of dogs. Sally's so scared of them, she left me here by myself. Did you say dogs? She couldn't have, George. Dogs don't attack houses. They were definitely dogs. They came out of nowhere and started leaping at the windows and scratching at the doors like they wanted to get in. Maybe that was just their way of being friendly. <laughs> These dogs were not friendly, believe me. And they had glowing yellow eyes. A bird watcher I ran into said they were ghosts. Ghosts? The man who built Sally's place on Moon Lake was a gangster. The bird watcher said that the ghosts of his dogs show up every time someone new tries to live here. The place is haunted by ghost dogs? Like there's such a thing as ghosts. But it does sound like you've got another mystery on your hands, Detective Drew. Yep. I can't go on vacation without running into a mystery. There's a private cemetery in the woods out back. Malone and his dogs are supposedly buried there. Creepy. And there were paw prints in the cemetery. Fresh paw prints. Are you sure you're going to be all right there by yourself? We'd volunteer to drive out there and keep you company, but unfortunately my car's in the shop, and you know what a scaredy cat George is. That's okay. There's really no room, and believe me, living conditions here are pretty primitive. Scaredy cat, huh? You're gonna pay for that remark, dear cousin. Yeah. Really, why can't Nancy call one of her friends, like call her dad or call her boyfriend to come out here and get rid of that tree? That would be helpful. Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs, Bess. I don't know if it does or not, 
Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, Park ranger? Is he cute? Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what would be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you were saying? Does Nancy think all guys are cute? Really? Well, I mean, he is cute, but... Uh, that's besides the point! His name's Jeff Akers. He's very helpful, polite, efficient, knowledgeable. Sounds boring. In fact, he probably knows more about the area than all the other residents of Moon Lake combined. Sounds very boring. What's he know about these alleged ghost dogs? He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving. Which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest people I know. Ooh, Nancy! Speaking of cute guys, Frank and Joe Hardy called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. Woohoo! Wow, more cute guys! Great. Did they leave a number? Their number is 280-555-4865. Bess didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone. Good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Call them, Nancy. They're dying to hear from you. But remember, Frank's cute and all that, but George and I want to hear from you, too. Yeah, no fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us. Promise you'll keep us up to speed? <laughs> I promise. This bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. Does he live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting Sally out of the Malone house? Maybe. From what Ranger Akers told me, Red would like everybody around here out of their houses. He thinks there's too many people at Moon Lake and it's ruining the bird watching. Ranger Akers called him a fanatic. Fanatic equals suspect in my book. Bye, you guys. Good luck, Nancy. And stay in touch. So does this mean everybody in the game hates everybody else, I think? Because Ranger Akers thinks Red Knot is a fanatic, and he doesn't like Emmy. He doesn't like M because she's illegally taking things from the lake. She doesn't like him for the same reason. He keeps catching her. And then Red Knot just doesn't like anybody ever for any reason whatsoever. I think, yeah, this is a game where everybody hates each other. This is not a game where everybody likes each other. How's the bird watching coming along? See you in a while. No hurry. I thought I had all the... Did I get all the pictures? Did I forget to get the pictures during the daytime of those last two birds because I got distracted chatting with my best friends about cute guys. Oh man, that always happens. Alrighty, let's go. Wait, I keep getting confused as to what it is I'm actually trying to do. Pictures of birds, everyone! We are getting those bird pictures, we are getting them, and those those birds will be fantastic. It's the red bird and uh, the yellow bird, so I need to go past the fallen tree for red bird there. Past the fallen tree. And I take the picture of the red bird now. This time I turn at the fallen tree. That takes me to the log, so I left at the log and then left at the ribbon again. Then I am going left and then forward for the final bird. Not the final bird, you'll notice I only have five pictures of birds here. Five, and we are missing.
missing bird number last, which is... Let's hear. Can I play the tape? American Goldfinch. I can't really Northern hear it. Cardinal. Um... Music in the background is a bit too loud. Red-tailed hawk. Western tanager. The red-tailed hawk is the final bird, and everybody in the chat is just talking about hot people in the Nancy Drew games. Because honestly, why would we talk about anything else? I think the hottest guy in the Nancy Drew series is Mr. September, but that's just me. Mr. September and Secrets Can Kill Remastered. Really love that guy. I think he just... I, I think he only won Student of the Month based on his looks alone. Really? Because September's like the first month of the school year. Was, was he really, like, doing any schoolwork then? No. No. I mean, come on. Like, September, you're still trying to learn your teachers' names, okay? Yeah. Alright, so let's go up here and talk to Mr. Rednod. How's the bird watching coming along? I just can't seem to find a red-tailed hawk. Any suggestions? Well, there's gotta be lots around here. You haven't been going around wearing sunglasses and earmuffs, have you? Where am I most likely to see one? Well, according to my bird map, they like to nest in the big tree that's just to the southwest of the Malone house. I suggest you park yourself nearby and wait. Bound to spot one sooner or later. See you in a while. Just remember, eyes open, mouth shut. Sounds good. Fantastic. All right. So he gave me the 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 map or something like that. I'm so confused right now. Okay, we go to daytime and then we're going to look for the red hawk tree. Which well, is here. Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. That sounded like a hawk. And here it is. The hawk is on a speaker. I need a camera. There it is. I better get a picture before it takes off. <laughs> Nancy talked at the same time Nancy talked. That was silly. Where's my camera? Here it is. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Uh. Ow! Huh? And now Nancy's on fire. I better get out of here. <gasps> My arms and legs are tied. I can't move. At least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. All right, we've got to figure out the solution. I think we kick over the gnome and use the gnome to, to move that thing. Uh-oh, that was wrong. I needed to set that thing on fire somehow by moving this to the left and then setting that on fire. And I move that to the right. It sets that thing on fire and then I make it roll. So game over, everybody. I solved the puzzle in the wrong direction. You're supposed to go left to right, not right to left. Wrong order. Poor gnome. Poor gnome. There's really nothing I can do now. Um, yeah. Waiting for death, waiting for death. Why is why is it not here? I'm trying to <laughs> Okay. Like Yeah, sorry everybody, I need to restart the puzzle. Is there any way to, to, to make the fire burn down faster? I don't wanna like exit and 
try to second chance it. Do we have any marshmallows? There we go! Now I'll hit second chance. Okay, so this time I move that over to the left, set it on fire. Move it over to the right, it's burning that. I kill the garden gnome by knocking his head off, and then push this up. Sending that thing over there, burning those ropes. So the scythe falls down at the perfect angle to free my hands. I can't just let this thing burn up. I've gotta put it out. No, no. Okay, so we need to get some water. We need to get some water right now. I see people in the chat that are saying, not the gnome. Not the gnome. Guys, it was either my life or the gnome's life. I went with my life. Okay? What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. Somebody knocked you out. Locked you in a shed, set it on fire, and you think they were, what, just pulling a prank? Wake up and smell the hostile vibes, Nancy! I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, though. Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the Birdwatcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ah, uh, that man is insufferable! Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, one more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. What kind of prank is that? It makes me wonder, because in game number 25, Alibi and Ashes, Nancy's caught in the fire. Does she think that's a prank? Come on, Nancy. Smell the hostile vibes. Also, Ranger Acres gave Nancy a ticket because somebody tried to set her on fire. What is wrong with you, Ranger Acres? Nancy, how's it going? This caller ID stuff is going to take some getting used to. I'm here too, Nan. What's going on? Yeah, man, I'm never going to get used to caller ID. That's so weird, bro. Bye, you guys. Ta-ta. Ciao for now. And, and also, why does Fred not think Nancy would play with matches? She's like 18. Nancy has proof. She has, like, the ropes and stuff that she was tied up with, Hello? right? Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah. That'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. Uh, here, wait a sec. Take a break. It's Nancy. Hang on. He's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi. What's up? Bess and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws? They told you about the dogs? We made them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. So you're living vicariously through me? It's not the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, detective? <laughs> the Hardys are very boring, and so they need to talk to Nancy to get all of their detective thrills. If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan. But don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it, because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. Hmm. Well, nobody really has dogs besides Ranger Acres. Emily Griffin doesn't seem to have any dogs. Uh-oh. Move her up on your suspect list. I'd move her down. You know, Joe, something tells me we're not helping. <laughs> the Hardys can't agree. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, 
I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. Later, guys. You bet. Bye, Nancy. Alrighty, so we're gonna switch to nighttime, cause... Oh, whatever his name was, wanted to talk to us. Red Knot. Red Knot. I've got something very important to talk to you about. Alright, let's hear it. Hello there. I owe you an apology. After you came up here looking for those red tails, I gave my map a closer look and realized it was more than 50 years old. The reason you can't find them is probably because their favorite nesting tree is gone. Finding that hawk's going to be harder than I thought, so why don't you just give me back my camera and I'll take it from here. It didn't get burned up in that fire or anything, did it? No, seriously, Red, somebody tried to murder me. That is the most important thing that's happening here. Somebody clobbers me over the head and then tries to barbecue me, and all you're worried about is your camera? It's a very expensive camera. Yep, but I was almost killed! I never noticed those gas cans before. I ran out of gas. So much for being prepared, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'm sure you've got places to go, things to see, people to pester. You'll be happy to know that I did get a picture of a red-tailed hawk. So here's your camera back. I got all the birds. Thank you, Nancy. Nice work. You're a credit to your generation. See you in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. whatever, man. I don't care anymore, huh? Huh? Yeah. Alrighty, so what on earth is it we do now? I think maybe we go to Emily, or wait, I think I need to notice I need sandpaper, and then I can go to Emily. It's stuck! I need some sandpaper. Yep, I need to notice I need sandpaper, and then I can go to Emily. And this is a puzzle we could have done earlier, but I'm doing it now, because I forgot about it until now. So let's go. Yeah. Cameras are really expensive. The, you know, the camera that takes pictures. They were really expensive when this game came out. Because, you know, caller ID was just a, a brand new thing. So this was before everybody had a camera on their phone. Holding up. Do you sell sandpaper by any chance? I do, but Mr. Birdbrain was in last week and cleaned me out. Said he was tired of that observation platform of his giving him splinters in his hinter regions. Think I could get some from him? He's your only hope, but you better ask him for it quick. That deck of his is pretty big, and those squares I sold him are pretty small. Guess I'll see you later. Yole, hee hoo! Yole, yole, yole. So I guess we need to go back to him and then ask him for some sandpaper. Alright, I'm a bobber. Let's go upstairs. Feels like we just have a lot of going back and forth, don't we? A lot of going back and forth, but we're finally done with Red's really, really long bird quest, so that's cool. Howdy. I'm sorry to keep bugging you, but I need some sandpaper. Emily said you might have some. Here, take it and scram. I was just about to call in a meadowlark. That was always Ruth's favorite. Was Ruth your wife? Good heavens no. My wife had no patience for birding. Ruth was my dog. Border Collie. She'd hear a metal lark, and by golly, her ears would perk, and she'd cock her head, and she'd just come as close to smiling as ever a dog could. Was she the only dog you ever had? Yep. Wouldn't be worth the hassle anymore. Especially now that I'm retired and spend so much time at Moon Lake. The place is surrounded by park land, and Ranger Acres just loves enforcing the leash laws. There it is again. Take your sandpaper and go... Sand something, okay? It's interesting to think about. You know, he had a dog. I don't know. Is he married? Does he have a wife? Either way, it's let's use stuck. our sandpaper. 
And now we can solve this puzzle. Oh, wow. Got it really easily. Solve the puzzle, everybody. That was actually a really tough puzzle. What you're supposed to do is pull this over and over and over again. This gives us signs for all the dogs. Each dog uh, matches a particular, like, season. And the seasons with those dogs are supposed to match this poem. Leaves that appear on a fresh spring tree make my birth different from the other three. When swans drift by on shimmering blue, I'm the one who plays in the summer dew. When autumn's call brings out the deer, it is I who howls on mornings clear. And when winter comes and birds take flight, look to me to sleep through the long gray night. Yeah, he does seem to be, I, you know, I think he's just retired. Maybe a widower, maybe not. Oh, hey, there's there's the second half of the game right there, that picture. Um, now we're going to be investigating a speakeasy, everyone. Isn't that cool? And here we have M.M. Pinched. That's a date that we need to know. Mm, it could be mice making that sound. We need something it to do that. Like a tiny hole. So we need to set the safe to the date that Mickey Malone was pinched. Mickey Malone being the head gangster who ran a speakeasy here back in the 1920s. Yeah. William Akers? I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. And yes, Mr. Malone's uh, number one man was William Akers. He's got four big dogs, see, and... Uh, Sometimes they don't mind so good. Interesting. Alrighty. Ooh, I kind of like seeing those stars at nighttime. So we're going to meet Ranger Acres and ask him about this stuff. Yeah, the Akers family has apparently lived here for a really, 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 really long time. Over 50 years. Ah, oh, and there's his doggo! Woo! Oh, it's an amazing dog. You're back. I noticed you have a dog. <laughs> That's Yogi, who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Park rules. He seems very well trained. I hope you're not suggesting I trained Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking and attacking houses. And somehow Yogi turns into four dogs. Come on, Nancy, why are you even suggesting that Yogi's the culprit? Ah, uh, whatever. I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. I am the expert on Moon Lake, thank you very much. What do you know about a man named William Akers? I know that he was Mickey Malone's right-hand man. I also know that although we share the same last name, he and I are most definitely not related. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. Mickey, I, I, I mean, Yogi's a good dog. Come on, he... he... He would not attack the house. Yogi's a very nice dog. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, I've been way too busy. Sounds like Moon Lake could use two rangers. If I were in charge of just ten more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant, and I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. 
Why didn't the Parks Department buy the Malone property instead of Sally? She outbid them, the cheapskates. Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price, and you'll have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. Yeah, I'm just saying you're probably trying to steal the property from Sally. I'm sorry, I really am. It's just that Sally's my friend, and I'd really like to find out why someone's doing this to her. Tell you what. If you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled with dates. They're from the estate of a local history buff. She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year using Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in order by year with the earliest date in front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, there's an entry on them in the computer. I hope I don't get distracted. Apple Crisp sounds good right now. Don't go reading anything until you're through, or take my word for it, you'll never get finished. When and why was Malone arrested? I'm sorry, Ms. Drew. As usual, I'm a little pressed for time. If you have more questions, why don't you sit down at the computer and peruse the Moon Lake database of fascinating factoids that I've put together? Fine. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. So, yeah, now, now I'm stuck doing this guy's chores. Does the computer say when Mickey Malone was arrested? Because that would be helpful. That way I wouldn't have to solve the puzzle of uh, the Roman numerals. It's going to be all the way down here, right? Mickey Malone, la la la. 1933. Oh, it doesn't say the specific date, though. All right, let's actually solve this puzzle then. Let's see. Jeff said the envelope with the earliest date goes down in the front of each box. Okay, earliest date on the box. MCM is 1900, 1910. It's gonna be 1904. That's 11. Um, this is eight. Yeah, I think that's it. So zero, four, eight, ten, eleven. Woohoo. Everything starts with MCM, so you could just ignore that because that's just 19. That's what MCM is. Okay, so 13, that's it. XIII. XIV is 14. And then, do we have an XV somewhere? Yes, we do. That's 15. XVI would be 16. But this is 17, and that's a 19. Alright, let's do uh, 20 then. 20 is going to be XX something. Now that they're all sorted, oh. I can do some reading. Oh wow, I didn't even have to touch anything on the, the, the right hand side. Well, that's good for me. So the mobster died. Died in prison. Two months before he would have been released. When was he arrested? This is him moving into the area. We need a date. Come on. Arrested. Hooray. So. Here he is in pajamas being led away. It looks like he was arrested due to tax evasion. That fiend. <laughs> It's just like Al Capone, uh, who is also a gangster, arrested for tax evasion. Alrighty, so he was nabbed January 29th, 1932. Alrighty, let's see. 1-29-1932. That's the number which will open up the safe. And now let's talk to Ranger Acres. You're back. I, uh, finished the job. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude, I've got something for you. It doesn't involve Roman numerals, does it? No, it's an honorary Junior Park Ranger pin. I keep them on hand so I can give them out to children whom I see demonstrating respect for park rules and regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. That's nice. Unfortunately, I don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Stranger Acres. What happened to Acres and the rest of Malone's gang after he went to prison? <laughs> Fortunately for Moon Lake, they all left and went their separate ways. What do you know about the cemetery behind the Malone house? People are buried there. Beyond that, what's to know? 
Is Malone buried there? That's the rumor. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Hmm. Why don't you know where Malone was buried? Anyway, I'm gonna have to take another picture. My picture came out blurry. If only I was like Nancy Drew and took great pictures the first time. Yeah, he gave us a pin. That was very nice of him. No, not really. It's kind of a silly thing. But hey, hey, we, we got a pin. So I think what we need to do is leave for a bit and then come back. Yeah, how does he not know about the cemetery? I, I thought he knows everything about everything here. Nice Junior Park Ranger pin. You must really be on Acre's good side. Oh man, now she thinks I'm a loser. Did Nancy instantly put that pin on her lapel or something? I found an old newspaper in Sally's house that contained an article on Mickey Malone. It really got my curiosity going. What else can you tell me about him? Person you should talk to is Jeff Akers. He's got this historical museum thing going out at that ranger station of his. How do I get to the museum? Just up lake from Sally's on the east side. Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. I've... I'm, I'm sorry. I love it how Nancy <laughs> has this conversation about Ranger Acres and then has a conversation that's like, how do I see Ranger Acres? You're back. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Aw, oh, man. Okay. I guess we need to leave and come back sometime later. Like, maybe skip ahead a day, and that will give him time to have done the research into that photograph. Nancy will proudly wear that pin every single day. It is her favorite pin. And let's solve that date puzzle. I need to put the pin in. It looks like a tiny hole. What's Sweet. the combination? So 129-1932. Uh, what do I press? This button on the right? One, two, nine. Nineteen. Thirty-two. Okay. Let's try that again. One. Nine. It could be one, two, nine, three, two, maybe. Ah, oh, come on. One, two, nine, three, two. Let's take a look again. It had examples. So, was it the last three days? So, 10 to 9 to 9? I feel like this puzzle shouldn't be that hard. Maybe, yeah, it could be like 01, 29. And then 1932. Hmm. No. No, that was not it. So we'll, we'll try with the 01 still. 01. 2932. Just the last two dates of the year.
that was it. We got it, everybody. I bet those were deer mice. I better be careful. I better be careful. Oh, Nancy needs gloves before she I can grab be that book. Nancy. She's too afraid of the deer mice. We need to get some gloves, everyone. Gloves are in the sink, right? Or something silly like that. Yep, there we go. Can I go through this area now that I know it exists? Yes, I can. Please tell me I don't have to solve this puzzle again. Yes, I don't. Hooray! So now that I have gloves and a gas mask, I can grab this book. Got it. Today, Speak Mickey easy. went to prison. But, uh, when they were walking to Paddy Wagon, he told me to take care of the dogs and do what their tombstones, uh, told me. Yeah. He said I'd find a map to the gold he stole two years ago. Anyway, I looked under... And the map just has lines, and it says, hey, the dogs will lead the way, and I, I don't know how to solve this puzzle. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I thought of something. Maybe he trained his dogs? Oh, I've tried to get the dogs to follow my commands, but I don't know. Joe yeah. Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here we go, this is the map. The dogs will lead the way. I wonder what that means. There we go. So that's the, uh, that's the puzzle. We need to figure out where the other dogs were. Or where the other dogs are. But first we need to find the speakeasy. And in order to find the speakeasy, we need to figure out that woman who was in the photograph. So let's uh, move ahead a few days. Okay, it's nighttime. Now it's daytime again. Switch to daytime again. And hey, 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 that should be enough. Ranger Acres has had enough time to find that woman, right? Right? So we're gonna look. Good news. I have information on your mystery woman. You are incredible, Ranger Acres. What did you find out? Her name these days is Vivian Whitmore. She lives in Las Vegas, and her number is 702-555-9137. Thank you for giving me her personal phone number. Where's Yogi? In the run, out back. Even out of sight, he's under my full control, as park rules require. Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? Oh, there's something here for you from the State Department of Health. Oh, no! Oh, my gosh. Not only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Ms. Drew. I'm sure there's a far less melodramatic explanation. I like melodramatic explanations. What can you tell me about the gold that Malone supposedly buried on his property? As far as I know, it doesn't exist. It's just one of those rumors people want to believe, so they do. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. It does not take much to convince Nancy that somebody's trying to murder her. Yeah. Well, what can I say? She's Nancy. Miss Whitmore here. Great, fantastic. If you're
are selling something, hang up right now. I got an air horn in my hand that could deafen a dinosaur, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh, no, no, please. I'm not selling anything. Believe me. Is this Vivian Whitmore? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You got exactly five seconds to state your business. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask you some questions. All right. The Moon Lake Park Ranger said you might call, but you have to talk fast. An old friend of mine is flying in today from Florida. And when I say old, I mean old, as in five years older than I am. Don't bother trying to do the math, sweet stuff. You'll hurt yourself. So, that ranger fella said you found an old picture of me. <laughs> Vivian is a cool character, yeah. It was of you and Mickey Malone. Do you remember him? Of course I remember him. I remember everything about that time of my life. It was the Roaring Twenties, for crying out loud. One of the most exciting decades in American history. Just because I've got a few years on most people doesn't mean my brain's turned to tapioca, sweet stuff. Did you spend much time at his place on Moon Lake? Moon Lake. Talk about your fond memories. I had a lot of fun there. Although I wasn't anywhere near as wild as most young people were back then. But I think Mickey kind of respected me for that. I was his gal for five years. He always kept birch beer on tap at that speakeasy of his just for me. Tell me about the speakeasy. It was in the basement, right there at Moon Lake. Feds never knew about it, but everybody who was anybody on the East Coast back then, actors, musicians, bankers, politicians, they knew. You weren't big time unless you'd made at least one trip to Moon Lake Mickey's. Alrighty, so, secret speakeasy here. That's weird. I'm staying in his old house on Moon Lake, and I haven't seen any sign of a speakeasy. Course you haven't. You're not supposed to. Only Mickey and Willie knew how to get into the speakeasy from the house. The rest of us had to go in and out the regular way, through the cemetery. The, the, wait, what? The cemetery? There was a lock hidden in one of the tombstones in that little cemetery behind the house. You needed a key to unlock it, and when you did, stairs would appear that led to the speakeasy. Do you have any idea how to get into Malone's speakeasy from the house? I sure don't. That saloon was built using two main ingredients, concrete and secrecy. Mickey always bragged that nobody could get in unless he wanted them in, and I do believe he was right. But I'll tell you what, if you send me that picture of me and Mickey, I'll send you my key. The key to the tombstone? You still have it? It's in the bottom of my jewelry box. I've come this close to throwing it out a hundred times, but it's so small and the memories it brings back are so big. Well, I just couldn't. As a joke, Mickey had a tombstone made with the name of this federal agent who had it out for him inscribed on it. That's the one the key unlocks. Alrighty, so we are going to get the key and break into the speakeasy. William Akers, the guy you call Willie. He wrote about looking for the gold that Malone had supposedly buried on his property at Moon Lake. Do you know anything about that? The hole in the floor gold heist. Well, I'll be darned. Somebody in the chat makes a good point. Vivian totally should write a book about her experiences with Mickey Malone. Like, I dated a famous gangster. That, that, that would be a popular book, right? That was the name Akers used, too. What else can you tell me? Truth be told, when Mickey told me he was the one who pulled off that heist and that he'd buried 20 gold bars at Moon Lake, I didn't believe him. I thought he was making it up. See, Mickey and I were on the outs by then. I thought he was just trying to entice me to come back. But if he told Willie the same thing, maybe there's something to the story after all. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea where he might have hidden it? Afraid not. Mickey was so secretive that the men who completed his house at Moon Lake were not only forbidden to talk about the work they'd done, but they were ordered to leave the state for good or else. But you know, I think he mentioned a map. Yes. He said he was making a treasure map in that... The dogs. Something about those dogs of his. I have the map and the clue. The dogs will lead the way. 
the dogs will lead the way? He was always saying that. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had it engraved on his tombstone. Think, Viv, think. He said he was making a treasure map and that he was also having paintings done of each dog. He made it sound like one thing had something to do with the other, like he was giving me some big important clue. But I just figured he was playing games, trying to lure me back with mystery and intrigue. I told him to buzz off. Maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah, I mean, you could have found the gold yourself. Did he say what he was going to do with the paintings? He said he was going to hang them in the speakeasy, and I'm sure that's precisely what he did. Can you remember anything about Malone's dogs that might suggest where he hid the gold? I stayed away from his dogs. They made me nervous, always jumping around, barking at this or that. The only one I liked was... Uh, oh, what was his name? Iggy! I liked Iggy because he was nice and quiet. He just lay on the porch all day and didn't make a peep. Do you know anything about the safe that's in the cellar of his house at Moon Lake? You must be talking about the wall safe. That was Willie's. By Willie, I mean William Akers, one of the guys who worked for Mickey. What can you tell me about William Akers? He was Mickey's most trusted employee. Mickey treated all his other men like dirt, but not Willie. He honestly liked Willie, respected him, trusted him implicitly. It's been fun talking to you. Anytime. It was fun talking to her. And yeah, it's definitely, it feels like this game, the first half of the game, is just bird stuff for Red Knot. And the second half of the game is Vivian and the Speakeasy. That's sort of what the game feels like to me. So, back to Ranger Acres. He is going to mail that thing for us. The, the photograph. Hello again, Miss Drew. Am I in for another interrogation? How much would it cost to send this photo to Vivian Burnett? As always, I'm here to serve, Miss Drew. Just give it to me and I'll take care of it. I'm sure she'll be very pleased to get this back. Wow, he's doing this for free. Like everybody else made us do stuff. Like Red Knot wanted us to take pictures and Emily made us collect a bunch of critters. But this guy just mails a photograph for free, even though it's in a frame, and, and it probably costs a lot of money. What do you know about a man named Joe Akers? Why do you ask? Well, he's your grandpa, I think. I recently found out that William Akers had a son. All right, all right. William Akers was my grandfather. Ha-ha! I, I was correct. And you don't want anyone to know that. It's not exactly something I'm proud of. My father spent his whole life trying to make people forget what my grandfather was, and trying to make sure people who didn't know what he was never found out. I've been doing the same thing. What did William Akers do after Malone was arrested? I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me, Miss Drew. In case you've forgotten, I'm a very busy man. Ow, ooh, ah, angry, angry face, angry face right now, ooh, mm, mm, mm. I apologize for my previous behavior. As a park ranger, I strive to keep my personal feelings in check at all times, and that time I failed. It's my duty as a public servant to try to make it up to you. What would you like to know? I love how he instantly apologizes. He did not stay mad at Nancy for long. Did your grandfather ever find any gold on Malone's property? If he did, he never spent it. He wasn't poor when he died, but he certainly wasn't rich. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. Okay. So that's it for that. He, he's gonna mail the letter. It's gonna take a couple of days. I feel like we should make more phone calls too. Like call the Hardy Boys, call Nancy's friends again. We call Vivian Whitmore uh, a second time. She should have a, a friend with her. Let's see if that's the case. But we don't have anything new to talk to her about, though. So let's at least... 
see if she's given me the key. A package just arrived for you from Las Vegas. Woohoo! Great! Vivian sent me the key! I'll dispose of the package. Thank you, sir. Wouldn't want to break any littering laws, would we? Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. And let's go. Yeah, it's sad. We have no reason to ever talk to Red Knot again now that we're done with his bird puzzle. His giant bird puzzle. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got an excuse to talk to Vivian again. Let's do so. Let's call the Hardys and Bess as well. Afterwards, though. Hello? Uh, is this Vivian? No. This is your station drop-off. Vivian's fixing snacks in the kitchen. Oh my gosh, Eustacia and drop-off? Harry Houdini's cousin? Use the air horn like I showed you! No, Eustacia, wait! It's Nancy Drew. I talked to you on the phone a couple of months ago, just after a friend of mine was kidnapped in St. Louis. I asked you questions about the theater where the kidnapping took place, the Royal Palladium, remember? Nancy Drew, the Snoopy one. You're not dead yet? Uh, no. Most people, I talk to them one day, next day they're dead. It is an old age thing. Oh, stop being so morbid here. Have some clam dip. Hello? Nancy? So you know Eustacia, huh? Small world. Well, what's up? I, uh, actually don't have anything to talk to you about, but it's nice hearing Eustacia again. It's been fun talking to you. I'll be suing you! Wait, no, don't sue me! Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, jeez. Let's call the Hardys. Hello? Hi, Frank. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Joe. Pick up the phone. Joe's in the kitchen. Worked up a real appetite watching me vacuum out the car. Hello? Hi, Joe. It's Nancy. What are you eating? Sandwich. Either roast beef or really old turkey. Can't tell. Don't care. So how's life as a dog catcher? <laughs> wow. I'm like, I don't know what the sandwich is made of. Don't really care. Mm, gonna keep eating it. I'm pretty sure I know why somebody wants Sally out of the Malone house. So come on, spill. Apparently, Malone stole a small fortune in gold bars off a train and hid them somewhere on his property here. They've never been found. How do you know? One of his employees, a guy named William Akers, kept a journal, which I found and of course read. Of course. Wait a sec. Did you say William Akers? Who, as it turns out, was our friendly park ranger's grandfather. Whoa. According to his journal, William Akers spent months following each dog around, hoping one of them would lead him to the gold. None ever did. So they didn't go running off into the woods, never to be seen again after all. Apparently, they stayed around Malone's house for years. William Akers went to the house every day and fed them until they all finally died. But according to their tombstones, they all died on the same day. Those inscriptions were Malone's idea. Akers was just following instructions. And in all that time, William Akers never found any trace of the gold? Yeah, I, I mean, he couldn't have found the gold. Otherwise, his grandson wouldn't be, like, trying to find people for $3 every day. He made one mark on the map I found, a capital I on the porch of the house. Any idea why? He discovered that one of Malone's dogs slept on the porch all day, so Akers dug all around underneath it looking for the gold, but never found anything. Let me guess, he marked the spot with an I because the dog's name was Ike. Iggy. Maybe the location of the gold doesn't involve just one dog, but all four in combination somehow. The whole idea of relating dogs to a map is crazy. They're animals, they move around. But they're also creatures of habit. Maybe that's the key. Maybe I just need to know their habits. Well, that could be a little difficult considering those dogs have been dead for more than half a century. So if you guys were 600 pounds of gold bullion, where would you be? Maybe Malone hit it in the speakeasy. I doubt it. 
William Akers had nine years to turn this house and the speakeasy inside out and never found a thing. Keep the faith, Nancy. If that gold hasn't been found yet, all it means is that nobody as smart as you has looked for it yet. Later, guys. We'll be waiting. All right, well, we'll call Bess and George later. Let's go to the speakeasy now. And now we've gone through the woods so many times, we might actually be able to find it without referencing that map. I think. Left. Left again. Left again. Got it. Woohoo! So it's right here. The key goes in here. We need to change it to say Baldo. So we're changing it from Waldo to Baldo, which is funny. Got it. Woohoo! Everybody in the chat is wondering about sandwiches and burgers. It's too dark. I need a flashlight. I have a flashlight, right? Okay, there's... Okay, that controls whether you go in or out. Oh, the batteries are going dead. And oh no, the... I can't see a thing. I'd better go back. Flashlight is dead. So now we need to go back and try to find that thing in the dark. Where is it? Got it. Managed to find it. Woohoo! Like, Nancy has her PDA. That does create a sort of, like, light, right? Oh, and hey, it's got the telephone number, so that's not very useful. So I need to get new flashlight batteries from Emily. All right. Somebody asked if I have a Discord. I I do, but I don't use it. I only use it to record a, a podcast with my friend Paul every month. I don't, I don't understand how Discord works. I, I guess if I took like two seconds, I could actually figure it out. But I, I just don't have the time. Too busy playing Nancy Drew, I suppose. Alrighty, over to Emily now. Discord just reminds me of AOL Instant Messenger. It's just a place, you know, a bunch of chat rooms for people to chat. It can be fun. How you holding up? Alrighty, so do you know Waldo? Does the name Waldo Matthias mean anything to you? Hmm, I can't say as it does. But where's Waldo? I need flashlight batteries. Do you carry them? Yep. But you know... I've been meaning to make a pretty display out of them packs of combo coal over there for the longest time. Just can't seem to get around to it. In other words, you'd like me to give it a shot. Here's the way it should look when you're done. Thank you. How do I pick it up again? Here. So we are going to solve this puzzle. Give me a few seconds. Where, where is the noise? The th ah. Alrighty. That one goes there. We're trying to make a smiling fish. It's, it's very nice. It's cute. And where's the other blue thing? It goes like that. Yes, I think we might have it. We might be close. What am I, uh, what am I missing? No, no, I don't want to look at my PDA. I'm trying to look at my thing. Oh, the eyeball is facing the wrong direction. Okay. That's purple, purple, purple. Uh, 
I, uh... Oh, this one's upside Ta -da! down. One smiling goldfish. <laughs> it's obviously never tried combo cola. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, that is combo cola. And uh, people are asking about my podcast. The podcast is called Oh, A Podcast. Paul and I record it about every month or so, and we talk about the video games that we make together. Hey, Nancy. This mean you got them cans stacked? You bet. They look just like the picture you gave me, which you can have back. Here's your batteries, and thanks, Nancy. Great. We've got it now. Yeah, I think if, if you're looking for the podcast, it is called Oa Podcast. You can also look for Oa Rock Studios. Uh, that's the, the website for the video game company. And so you'll be able to find the podcast from there. Yeah, no, Discord is confusing. It scared me, like, the one time somebody, like, handed me a Discord link, and then now I was, like, stuck on their Discord or something, and I couldn't find a way to get away from the main page. Also, this is another silly thing, but, uh... I don't know how to end podcasts or drop out of a Discord call. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid and old. But, um... So what I do is I just completely close the internet browser and that's how I end the the phone calls on Discord. Yep. Ellie, it's Nancy. Nancy, hi, how's it going? Just gonna talk to you about everything, gonna talk to Bess and George about everything, and that should be uh, about the end of the game. That Emily Griffin is quite a character. How well do you know her? I feel like I've known her all my life. She's so open and friendly. She likes to make it sound as if Moon Lake used to be a major hangout for criminals and degenerates, which isn't really true and irks some people around here no end. But I figure she's just trying to make a buck. I'm afraid I have some bad news. I had your well water tested, and according to the health department, it contains a very high level of arsenic. Arsenic? Somebody poisoned my well? Um, that's what I thought, but Ranger Acre said, no, you're being dramatic. Maybe, maybe not. The health department is running more tests. When you bought the house, did anyone mention a problem with the well? No. And it doesn't matter. I love that house, and I am going to live in it. If that well's bad, I'll just dig another one. At least, I will when I know for sure why bad things keep happening there. You are going to figure that out, right, Nancy? You bet I am. <sighs> I knew I could count on you. People are asking about me. Um, I was in training to become a priest, so I, I, I went to seminary for three years. So I think that was 2009 through... 2000, it was three years, so nine, 9 through 11. So it was over 10 years ago at this point. So yeah, I, I've, that was a long time ago now. In the paperwork that you had to wade through when you bought this property... Do you recall ever coming across the name Vivian Whitmore? No, I sure don't. Who's she? A close friend of Mickey Malone's, or so it would seem. Her name wasn't anywhere on the deed, I know that. And yes, I did do a game, it's called The Courting of Miss Bennett, a Pride and Prejudice game. That That is my game which has sold the most copies. It, it's, I think it sold like 2,000, 3,000 copies. And I get, what, like a dollar per copy? So, I, I don't know. So, anyway, um, we're not playing that game. We're playing this game. Were you ever told that Mickey Malone supposedly buried a small fortune in gold bullion somewhere on your property and that it has yet to be found? Is this a joke? N no, it's not. It's probably just a rumor, but on the off chance that it isn't, do you have any idea where he could have hidden it? Uh, no. Could it be true? It could be, yes. But even if it is a rumor, it seems kind of odd that no one around here ever mentioned it to you. How did you hear about it? I found the journal of a man named William Akers in a safe in your cellar. He was one of Malone's closest associates. Ever hear of him? Never. Are you aware that you're the proud owner of your very own cemetery? Yes. When the realtor told me there was a cemetery on the property, I went, ugh. But when I saw how far from the house it was, and how small it was, I decided I could live with it, as it were. 
So you didn't go out there much? Uh, no. Talk to you later. Thanks again, Nancy. Alrighty. Okay, so next is uh, we're going to call Bess and George, and then that will be it for the phone calls. No more phone calls after this, okay? Is that good? Hello? Bess, it's Nancy. I know that. What's going on? Of course I know that. I have caller ID. Malone's girlfriend, Vivian, said that Malone hired an artist to do paintings of his dogs right around the time he was bragging about creating a map that would lead to his gold. Have you seen the paintings? They're not in the house, so either they're in the speakeasy, which I still haven't gotten into, or they're long gone. Keep looking for them, Nan. If they were done at the same time as that map, they could contain some kind of clue. I think somebody may have deliberately put poison down Sally's well. Yikes! What makes you think that? The Department of Health found unusually high levels of arsenic in the water sample I sent them. Somebody's trying to poison you with arsenic? They said that? Well, I mean, th this is still up for debate, but I think we're being poisoned. It's apparently not unusual to find some arsenic in well water. So somebody could be trying to poison you, but you don't know for sure. Right, and they may not be trying to poison anybody. They may want to contaminate the well just enough to force Sally to either go to the expense of digging a new one, or forget the whole thing and leave. And because arsenic is found naturally in well water anyway, you may never know for sure. Bummer. Alright, checking just now. Uh, looks like the courting of Miss Bennett, the, the Pride and Prejudice game. So that just passed uh, about 4,000 copies sold. That's kind of amazing, because... Nobody ever talks to me about the game. I've gotten emails and, and you know, like Twitter messages uh, from people about all my other games, but not that one. The one that sells the most is, a, is like the old style romance dating sim. Get this. It turns out that Jeff Akers will be one happy park ranger if Sally sells her Moon Lake property back to the bank and they wind up selling it to the parks department. You think he might be responsible for all this ghost dog stuff? He has a motive and he has a dog, although it doesn't look at all like the dogs that have been scaring Sally. But it shows he knows something about dogs. Better pull out your suspect list and pencil him in, Nan. I still say you guys should lighten up on him. I'm... yeah, Bess is only saying that because he, he's good looking. And it's like, story of my life, I get well known for doing w weird random things, <laughs> I, I, I guess. Yep, that, that's how I ended up being the Nancy Drew dude started playing the Nancy Drew games on YouTube, sort of as a joke, really, because the first game I played was Legend of the Crystal Skull, and I did that the year Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out. So I'm like, hey, I'm going to play the Crystal Skull game for the, the Crystal Skull movie. It's kind of a joke. You know, it is a good game. I like it. But that's how I got started playing Nancy Drew games, just sort of as a, a silly joke. Same sort of thing with the name Argelfunf. Everybody asks me, hey, where did you come up with the name Argelfunf? Really just typing random numbers, random letters on the keyboard, got something which sounded like a word, and decided to go with it. Because I had no idea that anybody would ever, like, you know, watch my YouTube channel. Hey, newsflash. I think I know why somebody wants to scare Sally off her property, and it has nothing to do with birds, parks, or artifacts. So what does it have to do with? Gold, as in 600 pounds of gold bullion. Come on, Nancy, tell us everything. Gold is one of my favorite subjects. Well, I found William Akers' journal, who, it turns out, was our friendly park ranger's grandfather. Ooh, that's interesting. Not as interesting as 600 pounds of gold. Go on, Nancy. In the journal, I found a map with the inscription, The Dogs Will Lead the Way. You found a treasure map? My gosh, Nancy. Secret passageways, buried treasure, you're like a magnet for that stuff. The dogs will lead the way to what? Malone apparently masterminded a huge gold heist and buried the loot at Moon Lake in a secret location. According to the journal, Malone left Akers the map and said it would show him where the gold was, but all it has on it is that inscription and some landmarks. What kind of landmarks? The house, the shoreline, some rocks in the lake, the pump, the cemetery, and it's crisscrossed with lines like a grid. A grid? Sounds like precise locations are involved. Yeah. If I could go back in time and rename my channel, I wouldn't pick Argofump. I'd pick something uh, shorter. Argofump is just 
too long for people to remember. So when I meet people in real life, I say, Hey, uh, I, I'm Argolfuff, the Nancy Drew dude. Just look for Nancy Drew dude. That's why I put the Nancy Drew dude as the subtitle to the channel. Because I'm tired of people in real life. It's like, Argolfuff, how do you spell that? What even is that? Are, are you drunk right now trying to say actual words? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Mystery Michael. Maybe that's what I should have picked. Ooh, yeah. I found the coolest old newspaper. It's from 1927, and on the front page is an article about Mickey Malone and a man named William Akers. Akers? Any relation to park ranger Jeff Akers? When I asked, Jeff Akers said that it was just a huge unfortunate coincidence. According to the paper, William Akers was Mickey Malone's most trusted employee, his number one go-to guy. Where'd you find it? You know how I always seem to wind up in houses with secret passageways? Sometimes I think they follow you around. Well, I found these hidden stairs leading from the living room into the cellar. What's down there? That's what's weird. The stairs led down into this empty space. There's some kind of safe in the wall and a set of stairs leading to a door that goes outside, but that was it. Hmm. Why would Malone bother hiding a staircase if it didn't go somewhere important? Yeah, I can change the name to my uh, YouTube channel if I want. I'm not going to, though. Bye, you guys. Don't be a stranger. Take care. So that was the time, like, I decided to add that subtitle. Was, uh, uh I, I, I just asked everybody, do you want me to change the name to something that makes more sense? And they all said no. Everybody said no, you've got to keep the name Argolfunk because it's iconic at this point in time. But none of my family members can spell it. Okay, well that's not true. My wife can spell it. Maybe. I think she's the one who can spell it, yeah. None of my kids can spell it. I guess I should say neither of my kids can spell it. My other it family like members cannot. It's not very often that I have to tell anybody about my channel, though. I did tell the doctor about it, I think. Yeah! I did, did tell the doctor, didn't I? That was weird. Anyway, um... It's silly to try to explore this in the dark. Yeah, and one of the one of the moms knows me. I, I wonder if any of uh, okay, I'm getting distracted. We're gonna play the game and not talk about my personal life. I try not to talk about people in my personal life. Uh -oh. I want to afford them privacy. My my daughter's like, well, <laughs> everybody knows everything about your life because you post about it online, and I'm like, oh, well, that's true, I suppose. I don't like how Nancy says, uh-oh, like that. And here we go. We found the uh, speakeasy. So this is the speakeasy. Wow. This is so cool. All right, we get the speakeasy here. So each one has a color and a specific, like, location. If math is correct, the tree where Vitus would bark at the hawks used to be right about... Here. Yeah, so the last uh, time I went to the doctor's, I had a Goosebumps book, and the doctor thought it was cool. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I went to the doctor's. I, I need to make another doctor's appointment um, because I was in that car crash. But we can't see this painting. Oh, no, it's very sad. And I do love this sign, the Boneyard, if we could see it. So, Lucy would swim out to the shipwreck, which is about here. Nancy's just making notes on the map. So, what's the one we're missing? We're missing that last dog, wherever that dog may be. Is it this dog? Xander liked to bark at something. Can I so show the sign of Boneyard? Yeah, the Boneyard. Woo! I love it! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Sorry, I got distracted. Here, let me uh, try to solve this puzzle first. Uh, Those must be the spigots William Akers mentioned in his journal. I'm sorry. I've explained about the car crash in a couple of my other videos, but it, you you might not have seen that. So let me. Let me... The spigot won't move. There must right. be a way to unlock these spigots. I need to uh, unlock those spigots first. I think they're here. Sorry, getting distracted again. I really want to focus on this puzzle because this is a difficult puzzle, okay? This is a puzzle that you sort of need to take notes for because each of those dogs has a color, and I don't think the colors are marked. Yeah, the colors are not marked, so we need to remember the colors. And it's sort of like, L is green. So L is green. And then... Oh, what, what, what was the other colors? I'm gonna have to write this down. L is green. I'm trying to move around. Why won't the game let me do that? I need to approach this from a specific angle. X is red. X is red. Then V. V is blue. And... Uh, Iggy. I is yellow. Okay. So I think I've got got those notes. Let's do this. Okay, so it's gonna be, we need X here. X is red. So let's get red to be X. How do I do it? Pull this, and then press this button. We basically just keep going until we get X there. So X... And then blue, okay, we got X, and then it's gonna be blue, which is V, V for Vitus. And yeah, uh, a big reason of why I'm doing this uh, mega marathon is because I was in a car crash. <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds weird, but y you know, uh, that's sort of how it happened. I, I was going to make a left hand turn. I, I had the car stopped, and somebody crashed into me from behind. So they were going the, the, the speed limit, which was uh, 40 in that area. And, yeah, just completely smashed the entire trunk. The trunk was completely destroyed. It, it was declared a loss, just a total loss by the by the insurance people, which you could tell if, if, if you saw it, you, you would agree. Wow, that's totally not something that can be saved. And it was terrifying, because I had actually gone to... It's too dark. I'll use the flashlight. Actually gone to get... Oh, what's the word? Coffee? Coffee. I'd, I'd gone to get coffee, because it was early in the morning. Um, I had just gone to get coffee... And, um, coffee for my wife and everybody else at home, because everybody else is at home at that time is that early on in the morning. So, it's, you know, I got the coffee for everybody, and then I went to get, just, uh, so all the coffee got destroyed, because the coffee was on the seat next to me. So the coffee just spilled all over the seat, just burst everywhere. But I had gotten the, a coffee... Um, with with an extra shot of espresso, so I was extremely alert. If that makes sense. Xander, play by the pump, which is right here. And and so I was able to see like those last two to three seconds before the car actually crashed into uh, into me. I, I saw it through the rearview window, and it was just it was like my life was moving in slow motion. That's sort of what it felt like. I could see it coming in slow motion, but I didn't have enough time to react. All I could do was watch, because really it was only like two seconds or so. And just smashed into me. Then I got whiplash, and it was not good, and sad times everywhere. Um, I still am not feeling great about that, so I'm actually feeling pretty terrible. 
it's like whenever I have to make that turn, which I have to do quite frequently, it just kind of terrifies me. It's one, two, three, four down. So it, it, it's, I feel like, what's the word? It's like, I feel like I can't handle it. I get scared that the car behind me is going to crash that into me again. That doesn't sound good. And that's just, it's, I feel like that's something I'm just going to have to learn to deal with. Maybe over the course of time I'll be able to, to not be scared every single time I make that turn again. But it's, it's going to take a while. Yeah. So I, I was, basically I got whiplash and I was down and out for like two to three weeks. I'm still not 100%. But uh, that's why I was seeing doctors recently. Yeah. So, yeah. And, um... And it is funny, because it's like, that was the day my wife agreed that we could do the Mega Marathon. And I don't know if that's because she was feeling sorry for me or what. <laughs> and it was funny, because her first question was, um, how's, how's my coffee? She, she wanted to know how the, the coffee was. Actually, Mary's coffee came out just fine. She didn't get coffee. I got her a milkshake instead. But, um, Ella, yeah, it's just... So you're the ghost dogs. You look pretty real to me. And hey, we've got cute dogs. Let's forget about scary, scary car crashes and focus on the dogs. Aren't they so cute? They are really cute. Who's a good boy? Who's a good puppy, puppy, puppy? Hey, boy, who's got you playing ghost, huh? They're so cute. I really like those dogs, and they are called Rottweilers, right? I mean, this game is the reason why I know what Rottweilers are, basically. And we've got pizza here. So we've got glow-in-the-dark glow toothpaste. Safe for humans and pets. These dogs have been trained to act vicious on command. Yeah, so the culprit basically played that signal out through, uh, the, um, through the speaker on the house. And that is how the culprit managed to make those dogs go wild. Magazines, I love it. Look who's back! Brady Armstrong is making a comeback in his new movie, Do Destiny Shines Forth. Dun dun dun! And then Mayan temples use as alien landing pads. Woohoo! Is glow in the dark toothpaste a thing? I think so. Oh, and here, here's how the dogs have glowing eyes. Ooh, and that's a key. That's Mickey Malone's key. We need that to find the gold. Yeah. Alrighty, so this is the culprit's journal. And if you read it carefully, you can figure out who the culprit is at this point in time. We are really close to the end of the game. But, you know, you can figure out the culprit just by reading this stuff. So, like, Return Titanic to Val's Video Store... Okay, so, which of our suspects would be watching the romantic movie Titanic? And the dogs are named Eddie and Cher? Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like the culprit is somebody who's been dragging the dock, getting items from there, watching the movie Titanic. And the special uh, Mickey Malone key made in 1931, that could be. So the culprit basically um, has been looking forever to try to find the gold. Wants to scare Sally off in order to get the gold. Malone and his stupid puzzles can take a flying leap. Yeah, <laughs> people are talking about video stores. I actually have a... Uh... I, I still have in my wallet um, a Blockbuster video card store, <laughs> a, a card for the Blockbuster video. <laughs> um, there is a Blockbuster here in Oregon. It's I bet the, last... the dogs attacked Sally's house because the high frequency signal was transmitted to them through the speaker I saw on the roof. The last Blockbuster is here in Oregon, and so I, I, I went to visit them. And I was wearing, like, an Oregon t-shirt for an Oregon sports team. And so they rightly assumed I was a person from Oregon. And so when I was buying, I, I bought, like, three DVDs. Let's see. I think we brought, we bought Shazam. And, um, Rosie wanted a Barbie movie. I forget what movie Mary wanted. 
but the the guy asked, hey, do you have your membership card? And I'm like, no, I don't. And I could buy the card for $3 and get like a $5 discount on buying those used movies, those used DVDs. So what could I say but yes, yes, I will take your Blockbuster membership card and say Can people hear me? The game... I think I hit my uh, cord and then that broke the game. Oh no. Um, well, that's not good. Let's see if I can play this game again. Oh man, yeah. Blockbuster, Blockbuster broke in and killed the stream. Video killed the radio star. In my mind and in my car. We can't rewind, we've gone too far. Uh, 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 uh. So it looks like Second Chance puts us up here, which is not too far away from where we were. I'm sorry about that, everybody. I am a professional YouTuber. Uh, <laughs> I say that, but I accidentally bumped my microphone too much, and that made my microphone die, and that made the game crash. It's silly to try to explore this in the dark. I I need to stop touching my microphone, I suppose. Uh oh. Oh man, now I feel silly. Let's see if we can just do that puzzle segment again. I'm very sorry. Um <laughs> So this is the speakeasy. Wow. Why is there a second chance in the woods? Yes, like, was there something that happened in the woods where Nancy could have died? Alrighty. If you've got any questions or anything, just just drop it in the chat because so we're going to be here for a while. So Lucy would swim out to the shipwreck, which is about here. It's sad because we were really close to the second chance of the, the game over, really, because we were at the end of the game. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. Alrighty. If map is correct, the tree where Vitus would bark at the hawks used to be right about here. A hidden, hidden woods death. I don't know what that death was about. And there's Iggy. We already knew Iggy. Those must be the spigots William Akers mentioned in his journal. Okay, so... X-V-I-L. Let's just try all of them at the same time. None of those are correct. X, V, I, L. Man, I got some of the right numbers, but in the totally incorrect order. Oh well. I do in fact have a dog. Um, I forget how old she is. She's like six, seven, eight years old. She's a little Pomeranian, little Pomeranian lap dog. Basically, she just wants to sleep on your lap all day long. That's all she wants to do. She's bred to be a lap dog, just to be cute. It's too dark. Nancy should just automatically grab her flashlight. I feel like that would have been obvious. Oops, I went the wrong way. Okay. So let's see. Here we go. I was trying to go through here. No, that's not it. Ah. Okay. Head towards the light, Nancy, and then turn and then go through the pathway. Where is that one dog? It's not here. It was here. Xander played by the pump, which is right here. See, 
yeah, this... Definitely was a tough puzzle. One, two, three, four. Like, the odds of anybody solving this on their own without having the clues is basically impossible, right? That was that basically... That doesn't sound good. Basically impossible. So you're the ghost dogs. You look pretty real to me. These dogs have been trained to act vicious on command. Just checking all this stuff here, making sure we're back where we were. Okay. This time I, I should be good. I'll be a good guy. I won't I won't I bet the dogs attacked Sally's house mess because things high up. frequency signal was transmitted to them through the speaker I saw on the roof. Yeah, I don't think we learned too much about how the culprit found the pond. The culprit was just um dragging the lake and managed to find this area, I suppose. It must be at least somewhat hidden because nobody else has found it in the past how many years? Ninety? Now we go forward here, use the key we just got, and here we have a puzzle. It's kind of a tricky puzzle, you need to turn around and grab that right away. And we need to drain the well, because right now the well is so full. Something's missing here. Something's missing here. Something's missing here. What's missing? Do we put the screwdriver in place? And then the wheel? I think it's just a screwdriver. No, no, no. Okay. Screwdriver. How do I spin the wheel? It's locked. It's blocked. Oh, no. The wheel is gone. Okay, hold on a second. The wheel is gone. I will figure this out. Okay, what if I put the wheel on? Something's missing here. Like that. And then I use the screwdriver to keep it, keep it steady. It's blocked. It's locked. <laughs> Nancy. Nancy, Nancy, what are you doing here? It's locked. Oh, wait, this is a death. Sorry. No worries, no worries, everybody. No worries. Even though that's a death, we have an instant second chance. Okay, so we turn the left wheel. Then that wheel. And then that wheel. All three wheels. That's how we do it. Left to right. That's how. I'm this close to finding the gold. I just know it. Woohoo! We're doing it, everybody. Final puzzle. Well, not final puzzle. We've got like three puzzles. But that's okay. Oh, I need the wheel thing. Oh, that is one of those three puzzles. Getting the wheel. You have to realize you need the wheel. That I just... I better make sure this door is closed all the way before I fool around with anything else. What you should do is make sure this door is closed all the way. That way the culprit can't follow you here, Nancy. As has happened in previous games. Culprit just lets Nancy find the treasure and then tries to steal it at the last second. Nancy should be used to that trick by now. But I guess she's not. Because she keeps letting the culprit follow her. It's locked. Okay, unlock it. There we go. Alrighty. Come on, come on, here. These colors look very familiar. All right, so these are the same colors as before. Red was X, which is Roman numerals for 10. And blue was V, so that's Roman numerals for five. Yellow is Roman numerals for I, so that's just 01. And then green is L, which was 50. 
But you notice when I press some things, that changes other things. So 50, 10, 5, 1. Just largest to smallest. That makes it easy. 50, 10, 5, and then 1. Oh, no. 5, and 1. Did it. Okay, did that puzzle. Now we get the wheel puzzle. We don't have to secure secure that wheel with a screwdriver. We do not. Woohoo! And guess what? We found the gold. 600 pounds of gold bullion. Wow. Amazing. We found the gold, and now what do we do? Just turn around and go home? Hey there, Nancy. Why, what on earth have we got here? Oh no, it's the culprit! You can't let Emily catch me. All right, so here's that final puzzle. We need to sneak in, uh, shut this door, I believe, and go down through here. Luckily, Nancy can, I don't know, hover. I don't know how she fit in through that at that particular angle. Is she Spider-Man or something? I don't know. And she goes in through here. Oh, spin around. There's plenty of gold here we can share. Emily's hair, it's crazy. Open the door! Ha ha ha! Got you locked in here, Emily. And now I'm going to escape. Nancy, wait. Let's talk about this. This can just be our little secret. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, remember? Nancy! The gold's all yours, Em. Enjoy it while you can. And then Nancy casually walks away. Dear Ned, as soon as I got out of the tunnels, Emily had left a door open. I called the sheriff. But when I led him back down the well to the room where I'd left Emily, she refused to leave. He and his deputies finally got her out. But one of them said afterward that if he had to choose between getting a bear away from her cub and getting Emily away from that gold, he'd pick the bear. What's worse, by the time they took Emily away, the place was swarming with reporters from all over the country. The commotion has scared away every bird for miles. I'm pretty sure Red Knot would like to strangle me. On the other hand, when Ranger Akers found out that seven cars and two helicopters were illegally parked on park property and that he was going to get to ticket them, he was ecstatic. Tucker Dave has finally cleared away that dead tree, which means I'm free to drive home. Moon Lake is beautiful, but I've had enough wildlife for now. Which reminds me, did I mention that those four ghost dogs are actually very sweet? They're so sweet, in fact, that Sally is seriously thinking about adopting them. How's that for irony? Ever yours, Nancy. Bess, hi, it's Nancy. I'm at this little amusement park on the coast. I wish I could say I was having a wonderful time, but the fact is, some pretty spooky things have been happening here. There have been some strange accidents, and the carousel, it starts up in the dead of night all by itself, like it's haunted or something. You know me, I don't get scared very easily, but I saw it myself, and I'll call you later. I've got to go, I've got to go right now. Nancy Drew. The Haunted Carousel! That's the next game in the series. So what does happen to the gold at the end of the game? I don't know what happened to the gold. I assume Sally doesn't get to keep it. Maybe Nancy keeps the gold, and that's why she's able to travel everywhere. She's just super rich now. I remember uh, game number three, Message in a Haunted Mansion. Uh, didn't they get some of the gold? They got like a finder's fee. So maybe Nancy gets a finder's fee for this gold. Yeah, it's kind of funny how Nancy just was like, Oh no, I've got to go. I've got to go right now. Nancy jumps on the carousel. Whee! Riding my horsey. Woo! Yeah, definitely not not that scary of a game. I feel like this game was a little scarier. What with those ghost dogs at the very start? It's sad that the ghost dogs, they show up at the very start, but they never show up again. They show up at the very end, you, you saw there at the very end. But, yeah, I kind of wish there was a second ghost dog attack. Maybe something like in between the two halves of the game. As I said, the two halves of the game are sort of 
bird hunting in the first half, and the second half is basically the speakeasy. First half, the transition between those two is the shed being on fire, which is very dramatic. Um, yeah, that's actually a really good transition. I just wish those ghost dogs showed up a second time to haunt Nancy. Because every other time, Nancy just switches from night to day. There are no ghost dogs there. So, yeah, it's like the ghost dogs attacked her once and never again. They're not that scary. Lazy ghost dogs only showing up once. <laughs> saying I should play the, the Haunted Carousel right now. I will not. I'm not going to play the Haunted Carousel right now. I'm tired and need to go to bed. I'm not going to play video games all night. Is it Ghost Dogs in Moon Lake or Chores in Moon Lake? Huh. Not sure. Well, thank you very much for watching me play Nancy Drew, Ghost Dogs in Moon Lake. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties where my microphone died and I had to restart towards the end of the game. But I hope you had a good time anyway, despite those technical difficulties. Hope I didn't have too many people drop out. Uh, it was a fun time. Can't wait to play the next game in the Nancy Drew series, because Haunted Carousel is one of my personal favorites. This game is okay. I, it's not one of my personal favorites. We only have three characters, and pretty much all the other games have four suspects. So it feels like this one doesn't have as much story to it. And because the two halves don't seem as very well connected as they could have been, I feel that's also like a problem with the storyline. Because the first half of the game is basically just doing the, the bird chore for like an hour. I, I don't like that too much, but besides for those complaints, it's a pretty awesome game.